Hi, I'm Joe James, and in this video we're going to look at the quicksort. We'll take a detailed look at how the quicksort works. We'll look at the big O analysis of the running time for the quicksort algorithm. And then I'll show you how to write a quicksort program in Python. So let's say we want to sort a list of nine integers. First we're going to have to learn some terminology. The pivot is the item that we use for comparing every number to. So we're going to compare each number in turn to the pivot and move all the items that are smaller than the pivot to the left of the pivot and all the items that are larger than the pivot to the right of the pivot. And then we'll have a left partition, which will be the items to the left of our pivot value, and the right partition is all the values to the right of the pivot value. So selecting a pivot is key to the success of quicksort. Oftentimes you'll see the first item used for the pivot, but that's not always the best choice your best option is to find a pivot where you split the list in half. And the first item, if it's an already sorted list, is not going to split the list in half. Sometimes the last item is chosen, but again, if the list is already sorted, that's not going to split the list in half. Or the middle item is a, not a bad choice. Or the median of three, which is what we're going to use here. I'll show you how that works. And sometimes you can use randomly chosen pivots to ensure big O of n log n performance. So for this video, we'll choose the median of three pivots. So what that means is we're going to choose the median of the first value, the last value, and the middle value. And in this case, if you look at these three values, you can see 13, 17, and 54. The first value is the median value. So at least by choosing the median of three, we ensure that we don't end up with a terrible pivot. So we'll move our pivot value into the first position. And in this case, it's already there, so we don't need to swap it with anything. But if it were out here, we would swap it into this zeroth position. We set our pivot value equal to 17. And then we can start doing comparisons. So we have a border value. Everything to the left of the border is going to be smaller than the pivot. And then we'll work our way through this list to, towards the right. So we'll compare 5 to our pivot value. Is 5 less than the pivot? Yes. So we're going to swap it with the border. Now we'll advance both pointers. Our border is now at 41. Everything to the left of the border is smaller than the pivot. And we're going to look at 22. Is it smaller than the pivot? No, it's not. We advance this pointer. Is 54 smaller than the pivot? No. Is 6 smaller than the pivot? Yes, it is. So we're going to swap 6 with our border value. Now we're going to advance both pointers. Is 29 smaller than the pivot? No. Is 3 smaller than the pivot? Yes. So we'll swap 3 with the pivot. Now we're going to advance both pointers again. We compare 13 to the pivot. It is smaller. So we swap those and we're done. So now we're going to swap our 17 into where our border value was, the 13. Now we can see that all the items to the left of 17 are smaller than the pivot and all the items to the right of the pivot are greater than the pivot. And this is a recursive function. So we're going to repeatedly call quicksort on the left partition and on the right partition until the list is fully sorted. So now let's look at the left partition. Again, we'll take the median of three, the first, the last, and the middle value. We're going to choose the median of those, which is five. We're going to swap it into the first position, and then we're going to start looking at the 13. So our border value is 13. We compare 6 to the pivot. Is 6 less than the pivot? No. Is 3 less than the pivot? Yes, 3 is less than the pivot. So we're going to swap 3 and 13. And now we'll swap the 5 into the border position. Now there's only one item left to the left of the border. Technically, we would do a recursive call on this 3. I'm not going to demonstrate that here. And you'll see it won't matter when we code this. You'll, I'll show you that later. And to the right of the border, those items are all happened to already be in sorted order. Uh, what we would also do is do a recursive call on these two items and sort those. I'm going to skip that step so we can jump over to the right side of the list. We're going to pick, again, the best of three pivots. We're going to, it looks like here we're going to pick 41, which is already in the leftmost position. So we're going to compare 22 to our pivot. Is 22 less than the pivot? Yes, we'll swap it with 29. Is 54 less than the pivot? No, it's not. So we can swap our 41 into position, and now we're finished with pivot 41. We have a sublist to the left and a sublist to the right. We can do recursive calls on those. I'm going to skip that for our little demonstration and dig straight into the code. The way quicksort works is it recursively keeps calling until the list gets down to one item. 
So quicksort is a recursive method. It continues calling itself on smaller and smaller subsets of the data. It's a divide and conquer algorithm. It's very efficient for large data sets. Worst case running time for quicksort is big O of n squared. But the average case, in a typical case, is big O of n log n. And the performance depends largely on your selection for the pivot. And the hazard of choosing the first value or the last value for the pivot is if the list is already in sorted order or reverse sorted order, you're going to get very bad performance that way. So selecting a middle value, a random value, or the best of three values tends to work much better. So how do we code the quick sort in Python? First we'll start out with basically a user interface that lets the user just pass down a list, A. And then we're going to call our recursive function quicksort2. We're going to pass in A, a starting or a low, L, low index, and an ending or high index. What the quicksort2 does, if there's more than one item to be sorted, or if low is less than high, so there's more than one item in this list to be sorted, we're going to call partition function, which does most of the work of the quicksort, and it returns the pivot around which we partition the list. And then for all the items left of the pivot, we're going to call quicksort again recursively. And for all the items to the right of the pivot, we're going to call quicksort2 recursively. So getting the pivot is one of the key parts of the quicksort. We pass in the list, the low index, and the high index. And then we're also going to calculate a mid index, which is just the average of the low and the high. And then we do a series of comparisons to choose the middle of those three. So we have a low index, a high index, and a middle index. We want to compare all of those and choose the middle of those, which is going to give us the best result when we do our partitioning. So the partition function, the first thing it does is it gets a pivot. And the getPivot function returns a pivot index for our pivot value. Next, we're just going to get the pivot value, which we'll use for each comparison. We'll swap the pivot value into the leftmost position of our list. And then we'll set a border equal to the low item, or the pivot, in pivot value. Then we're going to iterate through our list from low to high. If the item is less than the pivot value, then we want to swap it with our border value. This way, all the items that are below the pivot value are going to be swapped to the left side of the list, with the border being our control point. Each time we swap an item to the left, we move our border to the right by one space. And when we're done iterating this entire list, we're going to swap our low item, which is our pivot value, into the border position. And then the border is what we're going to return as our index for the pivot. Now one way to improve the performance of the quick sort is by, for small lists, let's say less than 20 items, we can use the selection sort instead of the quick sort. So we'll check if there are less than this threshold number of items, which I set to 20. And if there are, then we'll use selection sort to sort those items. If there are more than 20 items, then we'll call partition, and we'll do a recursive quick sort on the left side and the right side of the partition. That wraps up our video on quick sort. If you like this video, please click the like button at the bottom of the screen. I'm Joe James. Thanks for watching.